Well, 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 hello there people. Welcome back to my channel. And uh, once again, or should I say not once again, I'm not gonna do a video <laughs> about my Lancer Evo, huh? but rather my W210 E50 AMG is the star of this show. And I wanted to show you how to do a fault code readout on this type of Mercedes. This is a 1997 model, so it does not have an OBD connector. It has a 38 pin diagnostic connection, which is very typical of this era Mercedes cars, the 202 C class, W210, uh, even the W124, the 500E has the 38 pin connector. So it's kind of unique. So I thought I was going to do this step by step at least. I obviously have a couple of reasons for doing this video or do this readout I should say. I've had a couple of issues when it comes to the ADS system on the car which is an adaptive dampening suspension system. This uh, error message comes up in the instrument panel uh, from time to time when you start it up and it just goes away. The system works. Also uh, another issue that I've had is harsh gear shift and that is kind of strange because I've replaced both the conductor plate and the gear selector switch in the gear shift mechanism. So all the components are original also so there shouldn't be any electrical issues of that kind. Uh, what happens was basically that I was coming into a halt and I was to back up and I put it in reverse and I put it back then to neutral and, and drive off. Then there was a harsh engagement and I was like, hmm, why would that happen? Then there was this other time when I was coming to a halt into a roundabout. Then I didn't touch the gear lever. I was just like coming to a halt, sitting there waiting and then I was to give the car some throttle and there was this harsh engagement going on. And I looked down and I saw the gear shift lever standing in between gears. Let me show you. So how it was sitting was basically like that. Not there and not there, but like it was stuck like there. So that was like, oh yeah, that has to be it, I thought, because then it, it don't know what gear it is in, so it gets confused. So that is one of the reasons why I'm doing this direct readout for you here. Either way, I think we should just walk you through the steps. Switch around the camera. <laughs> okay, people, do you have your tea ready? Yep. Yeah. So I've punched in the uh, registration number and it selects the car for me. It is an E50. Select what kind of diagnostic connection it has. It has a 38 pin. And this leads us into the menu. I want to select each and every one because the tool you're going to see here is a bit special compared to the star diagnostic tool, which has a 38 pin connector in one. But Mercedes also uses a breakout box like this would be in a way where you basically have three connectors. You have a positive and a negative feed for the multiplexer. And you have a signal lead that connects you to the ECU or the system that you're going to work on. So first off, you take your pin that is the negative and put it down in socket number one, which is the negative connection. Then you take your positive red feed for the multiplexer and put it in socket number three. That powers up the multiplexer. That leaves you with this pinout connection. First off, we're going to do the engine system, which is the pin number four. And you can already see how this layout is set up. It goes from pin one to three. And it continues down here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And all the way down to the bottom right, which is pin 38. So it goes from the left to the right and from top to bottom. Another thing that is very important is to connect a charger. It's to maintain a high voltage on the systems while you're doing the diagnostic work. Because often you can get fault codes just because you have a low voltage on the system that you're working on or on the car in general. So let us turn on the ignition. So we're on the engine management, that is motor steering. So we then do a system scan, and that is system scan on the engine management. It's not a, a complete system scan. 
Can you hear the sound? That's the throttle body working. And you can see, zero fault codes. Okay, that's good. Then I need to see the chart of the diagnostic pinout. Now I want to go into transmission, which is gear steering. <laughs> that is pin number 10. Let's select pin number 10. Now we're on four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, uh, come on, 10. Here you can see there is three types of transmission modules. And if you select all of them and you do this system scan, it chooses the correct one that is in the car. And there are people, we have a fault in the transmission system. It says shift lever, incorrect position. And that is what I just explained to you, what I thought was happening. I saw when the fault appeared out on the road that my shift lever was not in drive or in fourth gear, you know, in the, the shift selector gate. So basically, I think I need to adjust the shift rod from the gearbox to the gear shift mechanism. It is a bit hard to, to select gears in a way. It won't stay at the correct position here in the gate. Like here, you can see it stops there. And I need to do like this. That's not how it's supposed to be. And also, when you put it down there, it's like, it can be stuck there. So there's something going on there. And I need to check that out. This is the fault. It's a mechanical fault that makes the ECU think that it's not in its correct position. So that's kind of a easy fix. When I did the first readout with the ADS system, there was a fault in the initializing of the steering angle sensor. Unfortunately, I cannot access the ADS system here on this KTS Bosch unit. The ADS system does use steering angle sensor to determine steering input alongside the um, G-force sensors or turning sensors in a way. One on this side and there's another one on that side. So as long as I found this steering angle sensor fault in here, I do think that uh, the ADS problem is related to the steering angle sensor. So that rounds off this video, I think. I don't think I'm gonna elaborate more. I mean, it's just like connecting a couple of pins, but uh, at least I wanted to do a bit more out of it and not just show you how to connect three pins and that's it. Like, what's the point of that? It's cooler to show you a relevant case, which is uh, this one. <laughs> that was the last of my cup of tea also, so that makes for a good ending of this video. I hope you learned something. If you do wonder about anything regarding my 210 or my Evo or whatever, leave a comment down in the comment section. Subscribe, spread my channel. Yeah. <laughs> See you guys later. Bye, bye, bye. Bye-bye.